and Nigeria set to drop the toga as a polio endemic country. Good evening, a warm welcome to NTA Network News. My name is Funke Oga. Despite the rapid decline in oil prices in recent times and speculations of ample supplies in the global market, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, has decided to maintain its production level of 30 million barrels per day. Members of the consensus making body at its 166th meeting in Vienna cited factors other than all market fundamentals as responsible. It, however, stressed that its decision is based on restoring equilibrium at a level which will not affect global economic growth and where producers can receive a decent income to invest to meet future demand. Energy correspondent Hawao Salu Adama reports from Vienna that Nigeria's head of delegation and minister of petroleum resources, Mrs. Deziani Alice Madwiki, was unanimously elected as the president of the conference from January 1st 2015. The federal government says it has put in place short and medium term policies to cut expenditure to address the dwindling of fortunes, oil fortunes, and fall of the Naira. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy, Dr. Ngazi Okonja Uela, at the opening of the market, capital market retreat in Abuja also told journalists that government is making efforts to ensure that major investors in the Nigerian economy get listed in the capital market. Leah Katumba has the details. The present economic profile of the nation stemming from the global fall in oil prices, the recent devaluation of the Naira, as well as the fall of major indexes in the capital market are issues on the front burner at the capital market retreat. Short and medium term fiscal measures, accompanied by monetary policy measures enumerated by Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, are designed to cushion the effect of the recent challenges before the nation's mono economy. Cutting expenditures, both recurrent and a little bit of wastes and so on, you know, in the short term. And then in the medium term, we have to look at restructuring our public expenditure to take out inefficiencies, duplications, and so on. While foreign portfolio inflow has reversed growth, government, she says, has taken strong measures to curb the trend, one of which is to make multinationals list on the stock exchange. We're trying to persuade them to list because this... Nigeria has launched an online gas flaring tracker that will monitor and provide data on gas flaring activities gas pipelines and gas power plants across the Niger Delta region. The online system developed in partnership with the United Kingdom is to help guide regulation and investment to reduce gas flaring in Nigeria. Correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro has the details. Gas flaring in Nigeria began in 1950. It was supposed to have been stopped since 1984 due to its negative impact on human and environment but the 1984 deadline has been shifted seven times without an end to it, leading to 70 million tons of carbon emissions annually, while Nigeria's power supply is constrained by lack of available gas. The Ministry of Environment through the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency, NOSDRA, is working at reducing these gas emissions. The gas flare tracker is able to display the volume of gas flare which is estimated at 319 billion SCF per annum. From the volume, we're able to know what, what, what these companies have been giving to us and the, the deficits. We make them pay more taxes and recover more money. And for our part, the British government looks forward to continuing in partnership with Nigeria to help in that process. Development partners and relevant civil society groups hope that decision makers will be able to take advantage of data by the tracker to formulate policies for environmental standards. In Abuja, Emmanuel Ayemiro, NT News. And a bit of health, Vice President Mohamed Namadi Sambo has expressed the commitment of the Jonathan's administration to exit Nigeria as polio endemic country 
by this year's end. The Vice President expressed this commitment while declaring we are chairing the meeting of Presidential Tax Force on Polio Eradication. State House Correspondent Hamza Musa Makafi reports. It's enlarged. Meeting with the Vice President aimed at updating government on polio eradication and strengthening routine immunization. This year, about six cases with five in Kano State across the areas of Gaya, Taroni, Sumaila, and Tudungwada were detected, while Yobe presented one in Gujua. Comparatively, Nigeria's commitment is paying up as developing countries of Afghanistan has 80 cases and 238 in Pakistan. Our partners have been tremendous in supporting us. The WHO, UNICEF, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and a lot of others have been contributing immensely for the success we have been recorded in terms of financial and technical support. Of course, the federal government on our own part has always redeemed its pledge in ensuring that the agency, the primary health care, which is the main driving force for the polio eradication, is well funded and that all our programs are going at full swing. So I want to assure you that the Nigerian program is on course and globally we've been acknowledged as the best performing program uh, in terms of polio eradication. And uh, let me also mention that uh, uh, because the polio program is working and working very well, we've we'll been able to use the polio program to contain Ebola because it's the polio infrastructure that was used for case uh, contract tracing and then surveillance for Ebola. You know, so, uh, you know, the program is doing very well. And I think uh, we need to congratulate ourselves as Nigeria and then uh, appreciate and commend Mr. President for that leadership. Towards achieving the target of exiting as endemic nation, the tax force identified insecurity in northeast as more children are being missed and operational challenges as impediments. There is also the risk of importation from some countries sharing contiguous border with Nigeria. From the presidential villa Abuja, I am Hamza Musa Makadipi, NTA News. We now take on security issues. The humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons detonation resonated at the conference by the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons ahead of December Vienna Conference on the Impact of Nuclear Weapons. Karian Umayo reports that Global Civil Society Coalition of more than 360 organizations in 94 countries are pushing for new policies for nuclear disarmament. His report. Africa became a free nuclear zone after South Africa dismantled its nuclear facility in the late 80s. And for this, the continent is in a moral position to make a case for free nuclear world, despite the fact that Niger and Namibia are the fourth and fifth largest producers of mined uranium, the key ingredient in the production of most nuclear weapons. The use of nuclear weapon now is going to be way, way far beyond what we saw in Hiroshima and Nagadaska. And the thing is that the technology has improved over the years. The people in Hiroshima and Nagadaska are still feeling the impact of that uh, atomic bomb. It's our own expectation that Nigeria is going to take the, 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 the center stage for Africa once again to demand strongly that, yes, this is weapons of mass destruction and that the world demand that this weapon should be banned totally. There are also concerns about the level of security of the nuclear weapons in Pakistan and inaccurate assessment of nuclear material in North Korea. What we are even worried about now, not the usage by any countries, but by non-state actors, by terrorist gangs or groups, if they lay their hands on this thing, I tell you, they can perish a whole country. It is a desire that the entire Africa will come together Come, you know, form a common block. The Vienna Conference is framed as a continuation of the discussion on humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons. I can campaigners around the world are concerned about further proliferation of nuclear weapons, as the world already has over 20,000 nuclear warheads. In Abuja, Kirin Umayo, NTA News. Meanwhile, an exercise on multi-dimensional approach to counter-terrorism was organized for security agents in Abuja. Correspondent Anthony Fossen, who witnessed the exercise, reports that it was a practical display on how people held hostage can be rescued with minimal casualties. 
Gariki Shopping Mall was the target as the security operatives displayed their expertise coming from specialized training they had gone through. The successful operation saw the arrest of members of a terrorist group that has been holding occupants of the mall hostage. Briefing newsmen on the essence of the exercise, the director in the office of the National Security Advisor, David Terriwa, said the multidimensional ministries, departments and agencies' collaboration is to ensure that they are abreast of techniques of countering terrorism. To ensure that they have the necessary capacity to confront this kind of incident whenever it occurs. And the choice of Abuja, he said, is deliberate being the capital city, security must be beefed with nothing left to chance. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Similarly, the Guards Brigade, Mambila Barracks, Abuja, has organized skills and arms competition to sharpen the skills of participants on weapon handling. Correspondent Mohammed Abdukader reports on these and the flag off of HIV AIDS counseling at the barracks. Weapon handling is a critical component in the training and the training of soldiers. The skills at arms competition is aimed at improving proficiency and efficiency of the troops in weapon handling. The Gas Brigade Nigerian Army adopts skill and arms competition to know how they can manipulate their personal weapons in theater of operations. To come into a real combat situation, the man is already prepared. Five units, including 176 7 c Special Forces Gas Battalion and 177, as well as 102 Gas Battalion, participated in the competition. Meanwhile, the National Action Committee on AIDS is partnering Ministry of Defense, the Nigerian Armed Forces, and EPIC to fight the scourge of HIV AIDS in the barracks with free counseling and testing programs for HIV AIDS. Percent of those people that are you know, patronize us as civilians. The military has been one of our major pillars of driving the research for HIV in this country. The residents in the barracks took advantage of the program to know their health status. In Abuja, Muhammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. And relief materials worth millions of naira have been distributed to thousands of internally displaced persons of Gujba and Gulani local government areas disabled and those impoverished by the insurgency in Yobe state. The items were donated by Heart Transformation Agenda to complement President Goodluck Jonathan's administration's efforts in supporting people of states affected by the insurgency. Correspondent Mustafa Yusuf Musa reports. Large gathering of men, women, children and the disabled assembled at the venue in thousands hoping to benefit from food items, detergents, and clothing materials meant for distribution to them. The distribution exercise, which lasts for three days, featured indigent, widows, and disabled persons in joint digester, courtesy of Heart Transformation Agenda for Grassroots Movement for Jonathan 2015. According to the National Coordinator of the Movement, Alhaji Ado Adembomboy, represented by the National Secretary, Engineer Sadiq Abubakar Tijani, they are assisting everyone who is affected. It's about some certain items to the rest privilege in the society. And we are doing that due to this insurgency and the poverty that is seriously affecting our people here in the northeastern state. He noted that the gesture will be extended to Borno and Adama State in Dematru. Mustafa Isun Musa, NTA News. The Senate has formally reacted to the allegations of corruption leveled against the National Assembly by the former President Olusegun Obasanjo, describing it as unfortunate and a deliberate attempt to, de to denigrate the institution. The spokesman for the Senate, Ainaya Baribe, in a statement wondered how cons constituency projects initiated by the former president since 2000 and factored into the annual budget will become a direct monetary advance to the lawmakers. The Senate therefore challenged the former president to go a step further to intimate Nigerians with the true position of such projects rather than dragging the revered institution of lawmaking to public odium just to score some political points. And ahead on the news tonight, pres presiding judge berates caretaker committee chairman for abuse of court processes.
Stay with us. Into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. Change is never easy. It was not easy for Dr. Martin Luther King when Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew transformed Singapore from third world to first world. It was not easy. They stoned him. It was not easy for Nelson Mandela. I, Barack Hussein Obama. It was not easy for Barack Obama. Nothing worthwhile ever is. Dr. Martin Luther King did it. Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew did it. Nelson Mandela did it. Barack Obama did it. Good luck Jonathan is doing it. He is transforming Nigeria. Mr. President, keep doing it. We who are with you are so many more than those who are against you. A message from protectors of Nigerian posterity. and Ministry of Health team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know what germs are? They are tiny, harmful, living things that you pick up from dirty surfaces. These germs can make you ill and prevent you from doing all the things you like to do with friends. That's why you need to fight them by washing your hands regularly with Dettol Soap. Mom, today we learned how to fight germs with Dettol Soap. About 50 years ago, a child was born in the Ajia district of Ibadan land, named Oluwaseyi Abiodu Makinde. This child is divinely endowed with philanthropy and kindness to the extent that he cannot bear to see people suffer around him. He has therefore taken it upon himself to touch lives and make impacts with various philanthropic gestures, scholarship to indigent students, empowerment, widowhood supports, and countless others. He has been doing a lot of things despite that he's not in government. He's trying. He has done so many things for the people, bursary awards for the students, taking care of the widows. Support PDP. PDP Power. Omititu Igbautu. The public presentation of the book, Moving Forward, a biography of President Goodluck Abele Jonathan by the Board of Trustees of House to House Support Initiative for Goodluck 2015 comes up on Monday, December 1st, 2014 at the Showyer Adult Civic Sector, Abuja, by 10 a.m. Brand, under the distinguished chairmanship of Senator Joseph Wyas, former president of the Senate. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, President Goodluck Abele Jonathan, GCFR, Chief Manager, Alhaji Dahiru Barao Munga, Mwanwalin Kastina, book reviewer Dr. Mohamed Ben, chief host Senator Bala Mohamed, the Honorable Minister FCT. Attendance is strictly by invitation. Board of Trustees, House to House, announcer. Want your bathroom to dazzle? Give your toilet the hypo treatment to brighten and also kill germs so your bathroom stays disinfected and squeaky clean. You know that you are exposed to up to 100 illness causing germs every day. I encourage my kids to learn new things, and if they get hurt, I rely on my Dettol to fight germs. It's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. My Dettol disinfects surfaces and coats, keeping them clean and safe from germs.
No one knows cool like Higher Thermal Cool. And with Higher Thermal Cool air conditioners, you can stay cool however hot you become. Higher Thermal Cool. Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria. My good people of Nigeria, does anybody use mirror to look at what they have at hand? No! Good luck at ingredients of life, automobile industries, full encouragement, second Niger bridge from Mirai to reality. Good luck! Railways, seaports and airports are come back to modern life. Good luck! Or a Benin Highway and other federal highways from dead trap to modern spectacle. Good luck! Are you are? Uh? Petrol and nyafu nyafu with control price and so many old day chetra me chetra. Good luck I do. Good luck I going to do. And good luck will be doors. Are you see what I am so? <laughs> Only good luck I face the security challenges of Nigeria with honesty and commitment. Fighting terrorism to a halt. Catch you Good luck continue for Nigeria. This message is brought to you courtesy Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria. Done for one. Well, good to have you back on NTA Network News. The federal government has renewed its commitment to enhancing greater synergy between research institutes and industries that will require such innovations. The Minister of Science and Technology stated these were given a scorecard to the ministry in the last one year at the ministerial platform. Ahmed Ambali reports. Present its ministerial scorecard, and it was a scorecard full of empirical facts and data. Abdul Bilama, the minister in charge, listed achievements recorded in the last one year under eight headings. Top of the list is a successful revision of Nigeria's science and technology policy, followed closely by increased building of capacity for local design and fabrication of equipment, advancements in biotechnology, renewable energy, and space technology. But it was not a year without challenges. Much of the technologies developed experts at the event say still lie on the shelves. Appropriate leveraging in science and technology, infrastructure, Critical challenges such as healthcare, food security, water safety, affordable housing, electricity and environmental sustainability can be surmounted to the barest minimum. And it is how to bridge this gap between those who will develop technologies and the industry that the ministry seems to be bent on addressing. It is our responsibility to develop the strategy to face these challenges. And uh, some of the way we face these challenges the way forward. Uh, the first one is the NRIC. With appropriate leveraging of achievements in the year gone by, many hope to see a Nigeria where innovation drives the desired growth and development in the country. In Abuja, Ahmed Ambali, NCA News. And now to political matters. The Chairman, Police Service Commission, Mr. Michael Hero, has formally delegated some of the functions of the Commission to Inspector General of Police to strategically position the police for the 2000 and 15 general elections. The handover is contained in a document entitled Instrument of Delegation of Power. Bonaventure Umodo has the details. The delegated powers are in the areas of recruitment of junior police officers, promotion and discipline in the Nigerian police, which from inception is the responsibility of police service commission. The delegated authority on promotion is limited to the rank of inspectors of police. It may be possible for the service commission to exercise the mandate as enshrined by the law. That makes room for the police service commission to delegate part of its authority to the inspection of police. What we are witnessing will help us a lot in the improvement of standards, control, and other activities that will motivate the officers to discharge their responsibilities effectively. Mr. Kiryu explained that the law permits him to delegate some powers, 
but the Commission must be notified of such delegated functions whenever it is applied within 60 days. In Abuja, Bonaventure Wood, NT News. The National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party says all aspirants who have been cleared by different screening committees for the purpose of primary elections should disregard any purported disqualification by the party screening appeal panels. Political correspondent Femi Johnson has more on the story. The party says, for the avoidance of doubt, the screening appeal panels are neither authorized by the PDP electoral guidelines nor by the Constitution to disqualify aspirants already cleared by the screening committee. Consequently, the National Working Committee of PDP directed all affected aspirants to ignore such disqualifications and move ahead with preparations for the primaries. Meanwhile, the state congress is still generating attention. In our state, some aspirants allege that the congress was mad by violence. There was no congress. People just went to their room somewhere and wrote results. So, uh, I don't think uh, we've been able to get correct results of the, of the congresses. Also, aggrieved party members from Cross River State besieged the party's national secretariat to protest against the just concluded congress. The protesters expressed displeasure over the state government's interference in the process. We want a free and fair election. Let them stop running away with materials. The PDP National Secretary, Professor Wale Oladipo, says the party is already looking into the issues. All cases of genuine grievances will be addressed by the National Working Committee. I am assuring you of this. People should follow the law of our party. The People's Democratic Party gubernatorial primaries we hold on the 8th of December this year. In Abuja, Femi Johnson, NTA News. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has dismissed the action instituted by Ken Emekai seeking the extension of his tenure as the chairman of Anambra State People's Democratic Party. Presiding Judge Justice Elvis Chiku described the case as an abuse of court process. Correspondent Aliu Tuko reports. While dismissing the case, the presiding judge said the plaintiff was never an elected chairman. He inherited it from one Emma Nweze who was elected in 2010. With this, the tenure of the plaintiff as the chairman of Anambara State PDP expires on 24th October 2014. The court has also stated that there is a proliferation of cases on the subject matter, which led to violation and abuse of court process. With this judgment now, PDP is at liberty from this second yes. to constitute another. another caretaker committee or the same caretaker committee now to continue with the effect from today. Meanwhile, Justice Adene of the Federal High Court has also struck out the case instituted by Chief Omana Omana, a governorship aspirant challenging the legality of the November 1st World Delegates Congress of the People's Democratic Party in Akwa Ibom State. The judge held that the court lacked the jurisdiction to entertain an intra-party affairs. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. The former head of state and APC presidential aspirant, General Muhammadu Buhari, has paid an advocacy visit to the Bayelsa State APC Secretariat in Yenogwa. Aya Prezi reports that the presidential hopeful was received by the party's chairman, APC Bayelsa State, Chief Tiwe Orumige and other party leaders, the report. The former head of state, General Muhammad Buhari, says the visit was informed by his desire to meet with state delegates of the APC and seek their support towards the party primaries on 10th December 2014. The presidential hopeful urged Nigerians to participate in the electoral process and ensure that they make the best of choice in the 2015 general elections. The general says his position on zero tolerance and corruption is unshaken and firm. I want you Nigerians to participate. This is their own country. And their weapon is their voters card. They must get it. They must go and uh, vote. Chairman, all progressive Congress by our state, Chief Chiwi Urinimiye, who described General Buhari's visit as heartwarming and inspiring, expressed the hope that the state delegates will ensure that their choice of candidate will be determined on the basis of credibility and patriotism. I ask them to say, you know, they are party delegates, to say it must be this person, but let them observe as the candidates keep coming with their history and background. 
the party, the party delegates will look at who what that party ticket. Aya Prezi, NT News. And away from politics, the Federal Capital Territory Administration says it will partner with the Central Bank of Nigeria to build residential quarters that will accommodate more public servants and reduce the housing deficit in the territory. The FCT Minister, Senator Balak Mohammed, said that these when he received the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, in his office in Abuja. Mitaira Ipin reports. According to the FCT administration, out of an estimated 17 million housing deficit in the country, FCT has a share of almost 10% due to the influx of Nigerians into the territory in search of greener pastures. The FCT minister, Senator Bala Muhammad, says the quality of the several CBN residential quarters across Abuja is enough motivation for the FCTA to provide land for more CBN housing schemes. They target those people that will not can do it and they have the pedigree and the antecedents of doing it as you have always done. The FCT minister said the legal framework is being worked out to establish an FCT revenue board as well as an FCT security trust fund to improve security in the territory and requested the expertise of the CBN to which the CBN governor obliged. Naturally, we know that government cannot provide all the financial resources that is needed to develop any city. Mr. Emefele commended the FCT administration for providing a secured environment for the Apex Bank's operations in the nation's capital. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Thank you, Mitaire. Lagos, the center of excellence, is our first stop on news tonight. Abdullahi, tell us on the code of conduct for police officers. Thanks for joining us in Lagos. Thanks and for joining us in Lagos. Thanks for joining us in Lagos. Thanks for joining us demonstrate a high level of professionalism and neutrality in the discharge of their duty during the 2015 elections. Speakers gave these advice at a two-day training workshop on code of conduct during election for special law enforcement officers in Lagos. Ken Egbeluge has details. The role of security agencies, especially the Nigerian police, in the conduct of any election cannot be overemphasized. This is because they help in the management of electorate during elections. Speakers agree that for the police to be effective and be neutral during elections, there is the need to train them on the code of conduct. Nigerian police officers and men, as we have today of Lagos State Command, will not in any way manipulate or intimidate any set of human beings before the elections, during the elections. We need to bring them up to date with the rules and guides so that if they make mistake, they won't say because of ignorance. Speaking on the Nigerian police and code of conduct at election 2015 in perspective, Professor Undukeze Mwabweze described the role of the police as a key determinant in the successful conduct of the 2015 election. The police must be fair to all. Simple. All political parties, all the candidates, everybody. Other security agencies also pledge their commitment to supporting the police during the election. The training workshop is one in the series of programs to prepare the Nigerian police for the 2015 election. In Lagos, Ken Ibeluge, NTA News. The Ogun State Government has presented 5,000 home owners unit certificate of occupancy, building plan approval and other title documents under the home ownership charter scheme of the state government. The state governor, Senator Ibukule Amosu, presented the document to the 5,000 beneficiaries in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital. Correspondent Leko Gondi reports. The ceremony was witnessed by people from various walks of life, including representatives of professional bodies who described the scheme as right steps towards the development of the state. The state governor, Senator Ibikula Mosun, noted that the homeowner's charter was initiated to correct the obvious impediment being faced by the people in the acquisition of title documents. Apart from the immediate gains of this program, on the side of those, both the property owners, and the property of and the planning authority. The most important of all is the last legacy of building rights and orderly development among our people. In all, 50,000 
process, but we still have some little challenges. People without uh, photographs, people without uh, purchase receipts, so that we can do the stamp duty on the purchase receipt. Those Everybody can be assured from what happened today that we are organized, we are working hard at it, we are working day and night, and we'll make sure that every application that is credible gets their approval and their CFO. Some beneficiaries recounted with enthusiasm how they went about their process with some kind of skepticism but could not hide their joy. All thought that uh, maybe it's not going to be true, but I'm very happy. I thank God for our governor for this uh, initiative. The distribution and collection of the title document is a continuous exercise as Thursday, 4th of December, has been scheduled for presentation of another batch of 500 in Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NCA News. There are those that want to divide Nigeria, to take us back to another time. But the future belongs to you, and the better future is the one we are building together. Together we have built the largest economy in Africa. And now we must lift up every Nigerian child, strengthen education in every corner of the country. Keep building the infrastructure of a modern society, the roads that bring commerce, the energy and water and prosperity to lift up every family. So to those that want to divide Nigeria, we say the future is hard work, but we are building it together. We can't go back. The future belongs to us. Good luck, Jonathan. One Nigeria. Moving forward together. 50,000 Naira! Free money, free money, free money! This is no news. They said they're giving away free money. Free money? 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 Free Hurry! It's the Cherry Noodles Naira Hot promo. Cherry Noodles, love at first love. taste. We warmly welcome our special guest of honor, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, GCFR, to Nigeria Development with uh, the Yoruba, a conference organized by the Committee on Yoruba Progress. Venue, Odudua Hall, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Oshun State. Date, Friday, November 28th. 2014. Time 9 a.m. prompt. Signed, consigned Yoruba leaders. Auntie. Oh, <laughs> hello, my dear. I see you went shopping with your mom, right? And what did you buy? Power oil. It has zero cholesterol in zero trans fats and contains vitamin A and natural vitamin E. It's a healthy oil for a healthy family. <laughs> I'll buy power next time I go shopping, huh? Power oil, healthy for you. Africa. Some see it as a land of challenges. We see it as a land of endless opportunities. Where success comes from hard work and determination. And having a strong partner. Boxer, engineered to be stronger, engineered to last longer, because to make it in Africa, you need to be stronger for longer. Boxer, made stronger to last longer. I don't get this anti salad line. Hey, hey. Make I tell you, for every recharge way I do, then just a double lamp. See now, I never talk like this before for my life. The call not bad. What a boy. The browsing not get part two. See, anytime I buy 200 megabytes, then knock me 300 megabytes. That's not 50% extra data. Wait, oh. So you mean say, as I they enjoy free airtime, you, they enjoy a woof data? Yes, no. <laughs> Lastman.com. <laughs> I just the year.com. Ah. <laughs> we don't go hear what they do. No. <laughs> I must run. D.com. Dot.com. <laughs> 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 now you're talking.
Johnny S5.5, the slimmest in the world. Johnny, to be needed, to be loved. Good to have you back on NTA Network News. Nigerian pharmaceutical manufacturers call for government support for local production of drugs in Nigeria. Plus, more reactions on the dwindling economic fortune in Nigeria. Chia Zalem Ekeye has details on business news. Good evening and welcome to business segments. Data from the World Bank revealed that Nigeria has a growing pharmaceutical market in West Africa with over 120 pharmaceutical manufacturing facilities in Nigeria and a market size of over $3 billion offering 20,000 drugs in the ECOWAS sub-region. But in its quest to becoming self-sufficient in drug production, importation of active pharmaceutical ingredients is engaging the attention of stakeholders in the sector. If Africa has to solve its own problems, I believe and I recommend that Nigeria to, should take the forefront in the manufacturing of these drugs in Nigeria. The government should protect us to achieve this single objective. Stakeholders are of the view that if given adequate support, Nigeria can take the lead in Africa and beyond. And reacting to the devaluation of the Nara and industrial economics, Dr. Anthony Uwa has advocated and defined economic monitoring system as part of measures to sustain the growth of the Nigerian economy. Since it has happened, let us keep it to a limit. At the time, Naira could get to 300, 400 for one dollar if we don't start now. Meanwhile, the equities market closed today on a positive note as the All Share Index appreciated by 1.73%. Let's now take a look at the graphic details of the day's trading on the floor of the Nigerian stock markets. <music> That's it on business. I am Chia Zalam Eki. The news continues. The National Inland Waterways Authority says the ultimate aim of the proposed National Water Transportation Code is to prevent loss of lives arising from boat mishaps. The managing director, Ina Miriam Chiroma, said these while on a sensitization tour to Bayasa State. Zainab Banu reports. A river and states uses mostly water as a mode of transportation for people, goods and services. This has, however, led to several loss of lives and property from boat mishaps due largely to ignorance of safety rules and regulations while on the water. We have lost life and property worth millions. So if there is law and the law is being enforced, I think it's going to bring sanity into the system. The ongoing sensitization campaign tour by NIWA on the need for strict adherence to the safety guidelines was also to intimate the riverine communities on the proposed water safety code due for release soon. Once that one comes on board, we are going to ensure that every boat operator must have life jackets, otherwise we will not allow them to ply the inland waterways. Enforcement, we have the NIWA police, we have uh, also the marine police. Besides distributing free life jackets to boat operators, there was also a demonstration on its benefits in an event of an accident. Zainab Banu, NT News. Just Network Center is our next um, lineup, and Shew Said is our guide. Thank you, Funke. Welcome to Jaws. It is estimated that about 2.4 million people globally are victims of human trafficking and 80% of that number are exploited as sexual slaves. To check this ugly trend, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is collaborating with the ECOWAS Commission and the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, to stem the tide in the West African sub-region. Correspondent Jumwe Stephen reports. The increasing wave of trafficking in persons and child labor, especially in the West African sub-region, is becoming worrisome, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs believes that something must be urgently done to curb it. One of such efforts is this one-day sensitization campaign, which had in attendance paramilitary and security agencies, traditional rulers, faith-based organizations, 
civil society groups as well as women and youth groups. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and Supervising Minister for Information, Dr. Nuruddin Mohammed, who was represented, said, This crime has not only caused great loss to Nigeria and the sub-region, but has also affected Nigeria's collective image and integrity abroad. We are aware that in Nigeria is a source of transit, destination country for trafficking in persons. Most of the victims are deceitfully shipped. Plateau State Governor Jonah David Jang, represented by the Commissioner for Women Affairs, explained that the state has had its share of this trend, which led to the passage into law of the child rights law to protect children and punish offenders. In Jules, Jumai Stephen, NTA News. The northeast zone of the People's Democratic Party has screened gubernatorial aspirants in the region for the 2015 general elections. Correspondent Babayo Tafide Miso reports that the exercise was conducted at the zonal office of the party in Bochi. Leader of the screening exercise, Mustachike Chike Odinwa, one-time governor in state, said that the three aspirants were expected to be screened for the gubernatorial seat within the zone. He said out of the total number, only 19 aspirants appeared. No, we have not had any problems, uh, in fact, um, you know, at the level of uh, um, governorship, it's a lot easier because... Uh, so my parents call on one another to play politics without bitterness. In Bauchi, Babu Tafide Miso, NTA News. And that does it from Joss is back to Funke for more on Network News. Thank you, Sheu. Creating job opportunities for Nigerian youths is the rationale for the Cairo Direct Initiative of the Stanel Oil Group. And this is in line with the transformation agenda of the federal government. President Goodluck Jonathan, who was represented by the Chief of Staff, Brigadier General Dendi Arubofa, declared the ultra-modern plaza and gas station opened in Jos, Plateau State Capital. Kate Adebisi George reports. In line with the transformation agenda on job creation by the federal government, Sanel Oil Group provided kerosene tanks to 1,200 youths in Jos, the Plateau State capital, to enable them commence the sale of kerosene, considered to be an essential but scarce source of energy in some parts of the state. In President Jonathan's message, he says the administration is working tirelessly to ensure that the Nigerian youths are empowered. Our commitment is to make life better for all our youths. While the Minister of Water Resources, Sarah Ocheke, said that the center will provide job opportunity for the youths and widows alike. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Youth and Student Matters, Judy Magwe, commended the President for his passion for the youths. Senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel Church, Dr. Paul Enenche, described the chairman of Stanel Oil Group, Stanley Uzochiku, as a focused young man. The chairman of Stanel Group, Stanley Uzochiku, says the sighting of the project in Jos came as it was led by God. We just uh, capitalized on the uh, challenges people have been having in the society and uh, we carved out a comfortable means for them to, for us to serve them better. The Cairo Direct Initiative will be replicated in all states with Benway as next. Kate Adebisi George, NTA News. And as part of efforts to reduce carriage on some critical federal roads, the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency has begun the rehabilitation of the field section of Kaba Junction, Okene Road in Kogi State. The managing director of the agency, Gabriel Amuche, made this known while expecting the progress of work on the projects and others in the area. Works correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Federal roads in Kogi State are vital links to the north, the federal capital territory Abuja, and the southern part of the country. With pressure from about 21,000 vehicles that apply the route daily, according to the FRSC, coupled with trucks with excess as well load. These motorists say account for the deplorable condition of some sections of the road. The failed expansion joints on the Mutala Mohammed Bridge attracted the attention of the managing director, where he promised immediate repair. The bridge is so bad. We are begging the federal government to cut on it because when you are coming and you are not careful, you go to the water. So While inspecting the rehabilitation work on Obajana Junction, Okene Road, the managing director of the agency urged the contractor to complete the project 
before the 15th of December. All through this dry season, all major routes that Nigerians will use to travel, critical alignments will receive similar attention. The rehabilitated Kaba Bridge and its access road was also inspected. From Kaba in Kogi State, it's my Il Musa, NTA News. Nigeria static in November FIFA ranking. Details in just a moment. The Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Ibrahim Shekarao, invites all candidates who had successfully completed the electronic application system before the deadline of 24th November 2014 and fulfilled all necessary requirements stipulated in the earlier advertorials to attend an interview in Abuja from 1st to 5th December 2014. Please see the following newspapers for details. Daily Trust, Daily Sun, Punch of 28th November 2014. Dr. McJohn Wan Obiela, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Education, announcer. I need a great deal, the best price I can get, that's why I shop on Jumia. What is it you can trust? You can count on us. Get the all new Phantom Z at 52,999 Naira at jumia.com.ng. Jumia, the online shop you can trust. Know that you are exposed to up to 100 illness-causing germs every day. I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on my Dettol to fight germs. It's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. My Dettol disinfects surfaces and clothes, keeping them clean and safe from germs. With sorrow in our hearts, but with gratitude to God, we, the J.K. Azibo family, announces the passing on to glory of our father, brother, and uncle, Honorable Desiri Azibo, on 9th November 2014, after a brief illness. He was aged 56. Funeral arrangements. 4th December 2014, service of songs at St. Patrick Catholic Church, Sapele Delta State. 5th December 2014, funeral mass at St. Patrick Catholic Church, Sapele Delta State. Interment follows immediately at his residence, 70 Honorable Desiri Azibo Way, formerly Mission Road, Sapele Delta State. Reception at Sapele Athletic Club, 7th December 2014, outing service at St. Patrick Catholic Church, Sapele Delta State. Signed, OVA Azibo for the family. You're welcome to the last lap of NTA Network News. Scientists say West Africa Ebola vaccine trial is promising and suicide bomber kills five in attack on British embassy in Afghanistan. These are more on Global Tidbits with Talatu Izirike. Reports in Africa say that the first human trial of an experimental vaccine against Ebola suggests that it is safe and may help the immune system to combat the virus. From India, a federal investigation findings has shown that two Indian teenagers found hung in May this year actually took their own lives, thereby contradicting reports that they were ganged, raped and murdered. Why in Afghanistan, a suicide Bama has hit a UK embassy vehicle in the country's capital Kabul with a Briton worker among those killed. And from Malaysia, reports say the country's prime minister has gone back on a pledge to repel a controversial sediction law as he promises to strengthen it. That is all on Global Tidbits. Talat Ezerike, NTA News. And sports Nigeria static in November FIFA ranking as new talents emerge at ongoing 46th Ashujuoba Championship in Lagos State. Details on sports update with Ayodeji Makinde. Nigeria remains in the 42nd position in the November FIFA rankings released on Thursday. The outgoing Africa champions who recently missed out of AFCON 2015 and are ranked 9th in Africa, behind the continent's highest ranked team, Algeria, who are 18th in the world. World champions Germany continue to lead the way in an unchanged world top five. The Nigeria Table Tennis Federation says it will not relent in its efforts to discover talents that would return the country to our ancient years in the sport. 
This was echoed at the ongoing 46th Asho Juaba Championship in Lagos, which saw Samuel Sampson and Wahab Isiaka emerge as men's doubles champion and Amina Fashola and Sidika Yahaya as women's doubles champions. It's the 46th edition. And they have won it. We're in the process of building a new national team, some new players coming up. So it's quite satisfactory. We, we expect them to improve with the right coaching. But at this level now, I think they've done very well. Tributes continue to pour in from across the world following Thursday morning's death of Australian batsman Philip Hughes. The 25-year-old cricketer passed away two days after he was struck by a bouncer in his call while playing for Australia in the Sheffield Shield match in Sydney. With sports updates, I your Digi, making the NTA News. Thank you very much, IODG. And it is your right to challenge anybody suspected to be involved in unwholesome activities around you. Be security conscious. This message is from the Directorate of State Security. And on that note, we conclude NTA Network News for today. On behalf of everyone here, I say a big thank you to you. Do have a wonderful night, West. God bless you. It's up to us, all of us. The safety of our communities is in our hands. The police need our help and support. Boko Haram threatens our lives, our future.